Fantasy TV. Okay, before I start in earnest here, folks, I have a big, I got a serious issue to talk with you about, and I want to get this uh, over with right off the bat. I really screwed up the names of the Adams Family kids yesterday. I mean, I botched it completely. I called the kid, I think I called him Wolfie. Now, that may be the Munster kid. I think the Munster kid might have been Wolfie. The Adams Family kid was that chubby dude, and his name was Pugsley. And I said that the daughter's name was Wendy, but it was pointed out to me by an astute viewer. Thank you very much. That it's Wednesday, and I knew that. I knew that. I just kicked myself. Yeah, I kicked myself when I heard that. And of course, everyone knows Morticia, the ultimate long, cool woman in a black dress. Love her. And Gomez blowing up trains. That guy, <laughs> he took out his frustrations when he blew up his little model trains. He he loved it. He got that look in his eye, and he ashed his cigar. Love that guy. All right, so... um. I'm going to sort everything out for you here today. I got a text today by somebody who said, Martin, I can't believe you. Don't you know that this thing is showing how easily people can be herded? Don't you know that this is a harbinger of the mark? That um, this is very close to martial law and, and that the government shutting everything down and not allowing people to... Uh, to gather and even the horses you described martin on the beach don't you think that's a precursor of the coming uh antichrist the white horse rider horses don't you get the connection martin don't you remember everything you taught in revelation the revelation series and i'm reading this and i'm going uh yeah 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 uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, I, of course I know all that, I mean, yeah, of course, I've been, why wouldn't I, I predicted this for probably 12 years, I predicted a conservative takeover that would become the new, new world order, and of course this all belongs, this is all leading up to, it's a dress rehearsal for, if you'd like to say it that way, for the control that the new new world order will have over humanity so i don't want anybody to get the wrong idea like that i'm getting thrown for a loop or something here uh no this this has just been me uh venting this is my um uh, emotional reaction I, I think i'm allowed to have one aren't i i don't know maybe not i think some people are so like uh saturated in the end times mindset and they just watch end time videos all day, maybe, maybe, I don't know, that they can't think in the relative anymore and they can't react to this stuff. It's like, don't you know this is end times? Uh, yeah, I do know it's end times, but I'm also ticked. I liked my governor, Ron DeSantis, like three days ago, but now he's looking like a Hitler figure to me, closing everything down. Ron DeSantis, what the hell is going on? And Trump's looking shaky to me. But he's not. He's going to come through this. Let me tell you, believe me, folks, I have a bead on this, okay? I know what's going on. And I'm going to explain it to you today. I'm going to relate this thing, the thing, I'm going to relate the thing to the end times. Or as I like to say, the final years of Millennium Six. I'm going to use end times in the title here because that'll, get, that'll catch uh, people. But the one thing you don't get here ever is clickbait. Just when you think something is fantastic, somebody said that they thought my uh, video that said Martin Zender swims in Hurricane Matthew. It's like, oh, God, this is clickbait if I ever saw it. Then they clicked it and they found Martin Zender swimming in Hurricane Matthew. So I, don't, I never do anything that's clickbait ever. But I do think of, you know, titles that'll catch. But whatever's in my title, that's what I talk about. Hey everybody, this is Martin Zender breaking into my breaking into my own show uh, to bring you a special report from Fort Lauderdale where um, yesterday at 5 o'clock, as I've been saying, uh, Adolf DeSantis it not only closed all the bars and uh, clubs, but he closed all restaurants. So my brother and your brother here, Manfred Jones right here, who, we came down, we came up here just to see what the situation was. There should be 
thousands of people here now, but it's not. There's empty. This is um, called Spazio's. This restaurant here is always packed. You see there's nobody here. Uh, I come over here to the world famous Elbow Room. Oh, by the way, there's the... See a cruise ship? Cruise ship out there, you see it? Yeah. Yeah, this town, town is losing uh, hundreds of millions of dollars a day. This is the famous Elbow Room right here. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a Fort Lauderdale staple. The Elbow Room. There it is. It was in a movie in 1960 called Where the Boys Are, starring Connie Francis. And it actually launched the whole, uh, it actually launched the whole spring break craze in America. This place, yeah, that's right, this place right here. Yvette Mimieu was in the movie, and, uh, who's, what guy? There's a guy in the movie. Who cares about him? George Hamilton. George Hamilton was in the So anyway, here's the story. Uh, Manfred and I... We went to the pizza place around the corner, right? Right. Beach pizza. Yep. Yep. It's the cheapest food out here. And um, you can only get uh, takeout food, right? That's correct. And um, so we're talking to the guy, and of course, the, the guy says, business today sucked. He goes, yesterday was all right, but today sucked. And there's cops crawling here. I mean, every every corner there's like a police van, a cruiser, the motorcycles going up. He said that the cops, caught a group of five people hanging out outside his restaurant and the cop broke them up and split them up into three and two. That is correct. Is that correct? Am I telling the that truth, man? You are. You are. I heard him. <clears throat> I mean, this is this is practically martial law going on here. And so, uh, yeah, the, the original thing I heard, even though it's, it's just as stupid as can be, was... Ten people can't gather in a group of ten. Now they're breaking up. The cops are breaking up groups of five here. Groups yes. of five breaking up. Right. Next thing, I don't know, is it legal for a black guy and a white guy to stand next it to each other It may not now? be. It may not it be. It may not be legal anymore. <laughs> since we're going backwards, since the society's going backwards, maybe uh, Adolf DeSantis is going to go back to segregation. I don't know what he's going to do. But uh, we're not long. I, Manfred and I were talking on the way up here. We, we don't belong in this world anymore anyway. It's time to get out of it's here. It's time to get out of here. Even as beautiful as this is, right here, as, be as beautiful as it is, it's time to get out of here. Welcome to Ghost Beach. Welcome to Fort Lauderdale Ghost Beach. Oh, hope they don't arrest the dog. How you doing? <laughs> she laughed at my little joke. But I hope they don't arrest your dog. Don't folks, you dare congregate with over five people and uh, I think dogs count. Oh, there's a, there's some pictures of some girls over there in bikinis. I guess we'll have to go look at those. Look at the pictures. Yeah, as good as it gets. What if this is as good as it gets? I don't know, Jack. What if? And I know this isn't just uh, Adolf DeSantis. This is Trump too. He's. I just wish Trump would be Trump, but you know he he caved. But you know the political pressure made it impossible not to. In my humble opinion. All right. The weird thing is, I saw Trump give a press conference, uh, I think it was yesterday, and he was talking two weeks. But Adolf DeSantis said one month. So I wish, I wonder if Trump can take executive power or something and override the governors. I don't know, override the states. That might be, uh, that might be a bad precedent to set, uh, I don't know, but uh, Trump's smarter than this. He's gotta know that every day people are, are going under. People are going under every day, such as the financial crush. So I'm hoping Trump uh, takes a firm hand. But you know, I know that's a. I'm a small government guy, so it's hard for me to say that. But uh, I'm just wondering if you can do what Lincoln did. You know, in 1861, when he overrode the states, right, for the sake of the country. I know you don't want to really go overboard and overrunning states' rights, but uh, hey, you know. Uh, Trump's got to be Trump. But again, this is going to lead to big
bigger and more terrible things. But it's, this is the storm before the calm before the big storm. Remember that. Remember that. Back to my regularly scheduled program, Joined in Progress. You better believe it. So, yeah, what it just ticks me off. Two things tick me off. That, uh, of course, we're overreacting to this whole thing and it's fear is being used to control people but it's not necessarily done consciously by the second level players not necessarily done consciously and in fact it might not even well i was gonna say it might not even be being done that way by the first tier players but i'm not uh willing to say that in other words there could be design behind this although i think that it's as like uh obama's Guy used to say, don't, don't let a good crisis go to waste. Rahm Emanuel, yeah. He used to say, don't let a good crisis go to waste. And I heard that, you know, when this pandemic broke out, someone on one of the mainstream news channels said, this is a great opportunity for the, de for the Democrats. Yeah, opportunity? Like, th to take political advantage of people's suffering? Exactly. Believe me, these people want the economy to crash. They want it to crash. They're tickled. They're delighted when more people die. So Ron DeSantis, Heil Ron DeSantis. Are you kidding me? Ah, oh, dude, just grow a mustache right here. Grow a mustache, okay? Moron. So I'm, I have a more, little more venting to do before I take, give you the beat of how this fits in with the final years of, of Millennium Six because... Trust me, I'm aware that it does. Just because I vent for two days doesn't mean I forget everything I ever taught for 27 years. And it doesn't mean I'm not heralding the evangel. This person said, Martin, you need to herald the evangel. I do? I'll make a note of that. <laughs> what in the hell have I been doing for 27 years? You herald the evangel. Okay. I love you, though. I, I do. I love you. So I think our founding fathers would be astounded at what has happened to this population. We have become metaphorically pussies. Okay, maybe I shouldn't say it that way. Maybe I'll delete that, but I doubt I will. I will call, we've just been sissified, let's put it that way, um, because we're, we're soft and we, we panic at the least thing. What happened to the greatest generation? What happened to George Patton, Dwight Eisenhower? What happened to these men who just just put fear in the back seat and went full speed ahead? What happened to the MacArthur's, right? Douglas MacArthur with his pipe. I shall return. What would George Washington say? George Washington, wintering in Valley Forge in his tent, freezing his little first president balls off and the guy was just a man these were men well, I, let's look at some sports guys uh vince lombardi newt rockney uh geez i was just watching a youtube video with a uh, mick you know mick hey, yo mick uh, what do you think we're gonna do mick rocky you're gonna eat lightning and crap thunder you're gonna be a very dangerous poison you know rocky's trainer i was watching a clip with all mick it was all the Mick clips from all six of uh, Rocky movies. Uh, yo, Mick, yeah, you look pretty good at all those uh, movies. Rocky points out his two turtles to Mick. No, Mick says, uh, what are these? Uh, those are my two turtles. Yeah, the one on the top is the cuff, and the one on the bottom is uh, Link. Mick says, yeah, they make good soup. They make good soup. <laughs> I love that guy. Anyway. These are real men, and we have, we're an overprotected society. I saw a video where a parent was spraying their child at the bus stop before the kid went to school, spraying them, spraying them, with, spraying them with antibacterial spray. Like, I'm sure that's good for the kid, but you don't, see, we need antibodies. When kids go out and play and they eat dirt, that's a good thing because they're getting antibodies. But see, we overprotect them, and you're not doing them any favors because they're not fit to take handle the outside world and of course this all started as i said with the invention the invention of television in the late 50s early 60s that's when everything shifted and it made us into the society we are in today you didn't see george washington watching tv in valley forge hell no you didn't see lincoln 
as he's composing the Gettysburg Address on the train on the way to Gettysburg. You didn't see him checking his cell phone or watching YouTube videos like me. Yeah, I'm caught in the, I'm caught in the whirlpool. I hate it. No. No. So, yeah, we we're overprotected. Not only do we overprotect our children emotionally we never let them get any bruises we never let them get criticized we always tell them how wonderful wonderful they are and then they're not able to go out into the real world and so that's on an emotional front now i'm saying on a physical front it's the same thing we overwash over scrub overdo everything we spray 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 tss, tss. we spray every freaking intersection in and on our body we want to be pure you want to be clean no i like earthy smells i like i like earthy smells i like the smell of the human body i like nature it's like smell it oh speaking of nature they're telling us that the best thing to do is go out in nature get some fresh air what does uh what does uh adolf DeSantis do uh he says uh stay off the beach stay off the beach the beach you mean where the water meets the sand and that fresh salt water comes in from the ocean, it's the most pure place you can get with all the negative ions. Don't go to that place, you mean? that That's a dangerous place? Like, is the thing l lurking in the sand? Is that where you pick up the disease from the sand, from the water? Ron, I mean, Adolf. Ah, frick, man, they're just a bunch of pawns. They're a bunch of pawns. So of course I know where this is leading. Of course I do. But remember, it's not the obvious thing. It never is the obvious thing. Everybody thinks that the obvious thing i.e. the new world order, that that's the obvious thing. No, it's the new new world order, as you've heard me say. And it, what makes me crazy is these people, one of the things that makes me crazy. Oh, by the way, there's my girl Judy up in the background. I really need a poster of Morticia Adams because, ah, uh, besides Julie Newmar as a Catwoman in the 1966 Batman series, I like, I like Judy, but she's more cute. Obviously, Julie Newmar is more of a femme fatale. So these people that are telling us, they're projecting what this thing's going to do. These are the same people in the same science field that can't even predict the weather tomorrow. Our most advanced meteorological knowledge cannot, and I mean cannot predict the weather tomorrow. It's an embarrassment. I have the weather app on my phone, and it might as well be a report, not a forecast, because it just tells you what it's doing. For instance... I had it uh, last week. It said it was, it was going to be sunny. It was calling for uh, partly sunny. And then all of a sudden, it started raining. Then I look at the app, and it switched to light rain. It's like, you're reporting. You're not prognosticating. So they don't know what the hell it's going to do tomorrow. Uh, that plays into the global warming people. Oh, in 35 years, it's going to be so many, so many degrees. Really? You can't even tell me how warm it's going to be this afternoon, you morons. And so now these people are projecting, well, this is what the virus is going to do. No, it's not. And we're not going to listen to you because you're not as smart as you think you are. So I got a comment on YouTube uh, the other day about a guy said, and I understand this. I'm not, he knows who he is. I'm, I'm not uh, being rough on him. I understand his sentiment. He's saying, Martin, you're a little cavalier about this whole thing. Uh, you know, there are old people in the world and we know the thing hits old people especially. So you need to be a little more careful about old people. These measures are good. And I responded, and I said, well, I appreciate your sentiment. It's very nice. But are you kidding me? We're supposed to crash the economy for your grandma? We're supposed to cause 100 million people. Oh, I won't get that exaggerated. 100,000 people to lose their jobs. No, it's more like a half a million people to lose their jobs. So that your grandma won't die? Look, I don't want your grandma to die or your grandpa. I don't. I once had a grandma and a grandpa. Although you say, well, Martin, you don't have skin in the game. Well, yeah, you're right about this because my parents have been dead for 10 years. I haven't seen any grandparents in 40 years. But it's your responsibility to keep your elderly people off the streets. Keep the stuff away from them, right? So you, you can't expect us to crash the economy. You, it's not a good trade-off. I'm sorry. We're going to have to sacrifice your grandmother for the sake of the employment of 350 million people. I'm sorry. I know that sounds like a bad trade-off to you. But listen, it's your responsibility. I don't want your grandma to die. I really don't. I love your grandma, and I don't even know her. I'm sure she's cute, and uh, I'm sure she knits, and I don't want her to die. 
uh, but no, we're not going to, it's your responsibility. We're not going to crash the economy for that. So I want to make sure I uh, said that. And this, you know, I understand what's going on. It's like the government says, even the global people, they say, oh, we're going to save you. Save us from what? We're going to save you what we created. Isn't that convenient? So if they don't create the disaster, they definitely capitalize on it and they use it, as Rahm Emanuel said, don't let a good crisis go to waste. So they are definitely making hay out of this, politically speaking, of the left. They're using it against Trump. People, Some people said that's ridiculous. Most of you are agreeing with me, like, yes, 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 yes. And, um, you know, Trump has to do what he's doing. I don't like what he's doing. I really don't. It's the first thing Trump's done that I haven't liked. But he has to. He has to. And as I told you yesterday, I thought it was a particularly brilliant comment. I told you that this is an artificial solution to an artificial problem that's going to make Trump an artificial hero. I'm not saying people won't die from this. Oh, think of this. Think of this. If you never turned on the news, think of this. If you never turned on the news, you wouldn't even know this was happening. And you probably wouldn't even know anybody that got this virus. They would just get a cold. Oh, yeah, you have a cold. Yeah, I have a cold. Think of the beauty and the glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah, if we never even saw any news about this. Like it was in 1850, 1865, 1870. The good old days. Yeah, back when Abraham Lincoln was shot. Lincoln wouldn't like this. No, Lincoln sitting on that train on the way to Gettysburg, writing the Gettysburg Address on the back of an envelope. The same way the Beatles wrote, Love Me Do, on the back of an envelope. That's greatness. That's greatness. So, I realize that um, even, it could be that this thing's been manufactured. It could be, but I, I don't think so. But I could be wrong about that. I'm not even willing to argue that point. It doesn't matter. Because... In either case, it's being manipulated to get to get control. And I, I don't even know whether the first-tier players know that, but they're being played like chess pieces by guess who? Guess who? Ready? They're being played like chess pieces by God. So God is, of course, conditioning humanity to be herded, to be influenced, and, of course, everything's falling into place for the mark of the beast. You can't buy or sell unless you get the mark, yada, yada, yada. <gasps> I know, I know. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Life would be great without news. The thing is, I don't follow my own advice. I wish I could, because we wouldn't know anything about this. Life would be calm, life would be peaceful, we'd be out on, on the beach, we'd be, uh, you know, Manfred and I be at Blondie's having a rum and coke, he'd be having a corona, and we'd be all, everything would be normal, and nobody would know anything. Every once in a while, somebody would die, and they go, well, well, probably the flu. Yeah, as I said yesterday, this may sound callous and cold, but this is God thinning the herd. Think of it, think of this, think of this. The people, there's a verse in Revelation, I'll find it, read the whole book of Revelation, you will find it. It says, you know, blessed are the dead from this time forward blessed are the dead why blessed are the dead because the worst trials are about to come on the earth whoever is dying right now especially the elderly of coronavirus god bless you you are so freaking fortunate because you're gonna miss the tribulation which compared to this thing is huh, uh, you can't even explain how exponentially worse the tribulation is than this blessed are the dead who died at a certain time, probably before the middle of the 70th heptad, Daniel's 70th heptad, the last seven years of the tribulation. Blessed are the dead. So people are dying. Blessed are the dead. That's what I say, because the tribulation is at the door. It's kind of like somebody dying before Noah's flood started. It's like the flood starts on Wednesday and somebody's grandma kicks off on Tuesday. It's like, oh, they cry over grandma. I get it. I had a grandma who died. I understand. But then grandma misses the giant horrifying flood that floods the earth. So, eh. They probably look back as they're glug, 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 drowning, going, grandma was so lucky. Missed it by a day. Missed it by a day. Well, you're going to miss the tribulation by 
maybe seven, eight months. Is that a bad thing? I'm only asking. I'm only asking. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> um, and again, I think I call God sometimes nature. I use it interchangeably. Nature, God, whatever. It's the same thing, right? Uh, God takes his course. That's why, again, if we never knew about this. Oh, remember what I said? I made a show like two years ago. I was out in my car. I think it was the... Um, series uh, return to zender uh by the way if you don't know i have another series that's in the can 151 shows called return to zender uh go to my homepage, martinzender.com look on the left and you see return to zender i got 151 shows there and you go all the way to the bottom i got the revelation series i got 800 shows there i got 50 shows of uh secrets in daniel that you will find at the new Martin Zender, Dan Sheridan Show. Tons of stuff. Anyway, I was in my car and I was tickled to death. I was happy. I remember laughing at the beginning of the show because I said, I will never find out that I have cancer. People say, well, how do you know you won't find out you have cancer? Because I'll never find out. I didn't say I wouldn't get cancer. I just said, I'll never find out I have cancer. Because why? It's simple. I'm never going to get checked. No, I don't get checkups. I don't get checkups. I don't want checkups. Ignorance is bliss. I don't care. Because there's more stress involved with getting this diagnosis that might be wrong. It might even be wrong. Do you know how many times doctors have misdiagnosed people and they give them the C word, which in this case is cancer, and they tell them that they have cancer and then they all of a sudden, they, of course, you just panic. You get panicky and all these terrible things stir up in your stomach and all these poisons of worry. That's the technical term, worry poisons. They start going through your... You know, your body it almost could possibly become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Then they get a second opinion and find them, well, no, they misread that. You don't have cancer. In the meantime, you've gone through all this crap. And in the meantime, sometimes the cure is worse than the disease, which I said yesterday concerning the reactions to this thing, to the thing. Yeah, the cure is worse than the disease. I actually believe that. And when we look back, we're going to see that the cure is worse than the disease. But it's going to lead to Trump being a hero. I mean, Trump is going to come out of this shining, and there's going to be a rebound like you won't believe. This is what I'm saying. I might have to get to this tomorrow. Is where this fits into the new new world order. Maybe I'll do it today because it depends on what I call this show. I don't know what I what I'm calling it yet. You know, but I don't know yet. So, yeah, I think I'm going to get into it. I think I'm going to get into it. Um, so if you don't find out. You never know. That's why I'm saying ignorance is bliss. I mean, we don't want to be ignorant of the truth, but we want to be ignorant of this other stuff. If nobody ever saw the news, we'd be living normal lives, and people would just be dying. Oh, look, that guy died, that guy died. But people die every day. Like I said yesterday, of snake bites. I wonder if he got bit by a snake or if it was a virus. I don't know. Look at those two fang marks in his neck. I think it was a snake. Okay, here we go. There is a recovery coming after this that will this is my prediction could i be wrong no and there's going to be a resurgence in the stock market trump's popularity oh do you know this that they were trumpeting trump on cnn some info babe on cnn was saying how well trump was handling this oh and they had the ohio governor uh, no, the ex-Ohio governor. Maybe he's a senator from Ohio. He was a guy who ran for president. I don't remember his name right now. John Kasich. Yeah, that's his name. And he was on CNN, and they said, what do you think Trump's doing about this? And it was Don Lemon, or as I like to call him, Don Lamone. And they asked him, uh, what do you think, uh, Governor Kasich, what do you think uh, Trump is doing? Oh, I think Trump's doing a pretty good job. He's an anti-Trump guy. He hates Trump. He ran against Trump in 2016. I think Trump's doing a pretty good job. Don Lamone went crazy. He started talking over him. Well, 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 you can't mean that. Blah, 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 blah. But he did mean it. And then some info babe on CNN was singing Trump's praises. So I'm telling you, people who hated Trump are going to come around to Trump. And I hear Trump is giving every household a thousand dollars. I don't like big government. I don't think it's a great idea, but people are going to love it. All you got to do is give people money and they'll vote for you. <laughs> More money. Oh, and gas is going down to 99 cents it's some people say i don't put any stock in it i have predicted as you know the gas will go down to a dollar a gallon never saw 99 cents coming never saw that coming but I, I won't even claim this as a fulfillment of my 
of my prediction if it happens during this crisis because the dollar a gallon per gas is not going to happen because there's a reduction in demand and they have to uh, sell off the supply at a lower rate that doesn't count i'm not even going to claim if it goes down to a dollar people say ah zender you called it uh, no 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 this is not what i called i won't even claim credit for that even though i could i easily could make myself look good nope nope the dollar gallon is going to be because of prosperity, not because of desperation. So I'm not going to cheat on this. I am not going to cheat. cheat. So People are coming to Trump, I think, every day. Former haters, they're seeing, oh, Governor Cuomo of New York is saying Trump is doing a pretty good job. Gavin Newsom, the libtard governor of California. And we all know that the libtard government is ruining the state of California. He said, I'm perfectly satisfied with the federal government's response, i.e. Trump. And I think he might even have mentioned Trump. Perfectly happy with his response. I'm going to link you, before I get to the critical part here in the last part of the show, to an article by a guy named Jared Sickle of the DailyWire.com. It's an article where he says that you have to make a balance between how much you're willing to disrupt the economy to save a thousand people. Oh, and going back to the guy with his grandmother, um, I quoted to him Winston Churchill, the famous Winston Churchill uh, statement during World War II. He was talking about the RAF and uh, beating back the Luftwaffe of Hitler's Air Force. And he said, never has so much been done for so many by so few. What a great statement. He didn't say it like that. Never has so much been done for so many by so few. And he was holding a whiskey and smoking a cigar. They actually name a type of cigar after him. It's called a Churchill. It's about a foot long. Never has so much been done by so few for... I just screwed it up there. But he might have screwed it up the first two takes because he was drinking the... drinking the uh, distilled grain beverage there. But I told this guy what Churchill said was acceptable. But what you're asking for is not acceptable. It, it, it would be never has so much been done for so few few by so many we're protecting an elderly population by sacrificing the entire world economy never has so much been done for so few by so many corporate global suffering because of a handful of elderly people again i don't want the elderly people to die but it's your responsibility to keep them out of harm's way keep them off the street keep them out of the bingo halls Keep them out of the crochet competition. You're going to have to pass this year on the International Crochet World Championship. You're just going to have to, okay? You might have to cancel Bingo Mania. It's just, you know, you have to sacrifice for your own. Don't expect us to do it because we're just not that interested. Uh, yeah, so people are coming to Trump. And I had a friend write me, listen to this. He gave me th this quote. And this is what he says, and this is what I've been teaching for 10 years. He said this, quote, The rebound coming is the contrast needed to seduce slash deceive people. Because people will say, and he quotes here, Whew, glad that's over. Thank God for Trump and the money. What do we have to do now? So, of course, people are becoming more compliant and they will come even more de dependent on the government. And this will turn what is now a conservative movement into a control movement. It'll be very uh, subtle. Well, it might not be because the things of the end time are going to happen quickly, swiftly, as John says in chapter one of the unveiling, verse one. Yes, I remember everything I said about the revelation for three and a half years. And I remember everything I said about the conservative party coming into power. For 12 years so my friend goes on the trap will be set the new new world order is crushed oh he says the new world order yes the new world order is crushed by the new new world order that's the deal it'll be crushed by the new new world order so because of the recovery which i believe will come on the heels of this I don't know when. I don't know the timing exactly, but it's going to happen swiftly. And the rebound, people are going to be flush. And they're going to go to sleep. This is the peace and prosperity that is just around the corner that will precede the total, total disaster. 
So this is the disaster before the peace and prosperity, which will lead to the total disaster. This is just a preliminary disaster, as my friend suggested on the text that she sent me today, which I agreed with 100%. She thought she was informing me of something I didn't know. Okay. Don't you see what this is preparing people for? Uh, 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 uh. Well, of course, this is like a dress rehearsal, which I believe I said on another show. But I also vent, and we're overprotecting everybody. And um, it's too bad that we're not, you know, George Patton, George Washington anymore. But no, we've become a weak society, and we've been, we've been just broken down intelligence-wise, uh, susceptibility-wise, uh, strength-wise by television. And it's just gotten worse since the mid-50s, especially 1959. That's the year I, th I think everything turned. There was that's a, a fulcrum year, a pivot year. It's like a tipping point year where we began to get into social... Uh, away from actual social interaction into the television. It's not the same as the good old radio days. Hi-ho, Silver, the Lone Ranger. He listened to the radio as a kid. That's before my time, please. So, no, and since television, of course, it's gotten insane. These, everybody's on their stupid phones. It's brain dead, brain dead, brain dead. We're surrounded by brain dead, and they're just totally... Uh, controllable and but remember this the 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 final deception has to be so slick that even the elect would be deceived if possible that's the thing even the elect would be deceived if possible so i'm waiting for something that looks so damn good to me that even i would say mm, mm, this is pretty good i could stand to hang around the earth for five more years if this is the way things are so no but things are going to happen bang 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 like dominoes falling that's my prediction. Now, could I be wrong? No.